Thank you, Chairman. Well, uh, just now we have already have a, a bri uh, the, uh, the, uh, the previous uh, panelist has briefed the history of uh, arms control. I, I want to focus on uh, what's uh, uh, going on today. And uh, actually, my understanding, the arms control regime and uh, being undermined by the uh, junior Bush administration when he admitted and uh, nuclear cooperation with uh, the India. And uh, since then on, this uh, um, arms control regime did not achieve anything substantial. Actually, during Clinton's period, and uh, the arms re control regime make a big progress. And for instance, at that time, and China and the uh, Clinton administration revised the, the um, uh, MTCR, and uh, uh, China and joined that, that program and all of the other, they linked this uh, missiles and the warheads together and uh, make a one after another progress. But uh, since and uh, Junior Bush came to power and the whole international arms control regime stopped making progress. Well, what I, I want to focus on, I want talking about the, uh, since this is a column about multilateralism, I'm, I want to talk, uh, talk a, a little bit about the bilateralism and the multilateralism in arms control. And um, now this is some people argue, they say that look at that, when Trump administration abandoned multilateralism on North Korea's nuclear uh, uh, issues, and they make progress. And so six party talks advocated by China as a multilateralism achieved nothing. Big six party talks has a, a, a went on for years and went nowhere. And finally it stopped. And when Trump abandoned the multilateralism and talked with the North Korea directly, just, you know, usually the Americans rejected to have a bilateral talk with the North Korea. But now the U.S. Uh, uh, Trump administration said, I only want to have bilateral talk. So this issue becomes uh, China, South Korea, U.S., South Korea, North Korea, South Korea, and then U.S., Japan, U.S., China, U.S., South Korea. This uh, purely becomes a, 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 a bilateral. Uh, discussion. This uh, bilateral discussion finally resulted uh, and uh, really unexpected in the U.S. North Korea summit. You can't believe it. And so there's a debate in China. I don't know how about the, uh, whether it is uh, uh, the same uh, similar situation in the other countries. People say, hey, and in the future, the arms control should be focused on multilateral approach or bilateral approach. Some people argue that a bilateral approach is more effective than multilateral. Someone argue that have a bilateral first and then put them together and merge into a multilateral. Well, there's a lot of ideas. But from my understanding, this debate in China at least, I think is misleading people understand the, the core of the issue North Korea's nuclear weapons. And actually no matter the Trump administration and uh, adopt a bilateral or multilateral uh, uh, approach, North Korea already decided to stop nuclear test. The reason is that their, the, the goal of their deterrence is very low because the nuclear weapon is the base of North Korea's regime security. So they just want to make the regime can survive so how did this link to the nuclear weapons? It means that as long as U.S. do not launch a war against North Korea, they can survive. Let her uh, uh, leave, uh, leave alone the domestic factors. So in that case, so North Korea already prepared to have the last nuclear test and then want to sit down, sit down to talk and to uh, release all of these sanctions. So when Trump administration said, okay, I want to talk to you if you stop, Actually, North Korea already prepared for that because it's just like what I have said. And so now we, we find that whether a country, uh, I mean nuclear uh, power, to abandon their nuclear weapons closely relate to one thing, is the regime security. You see, North Korea do not abandon the no, uh, nuclear weapons because of when the uh, apartheid regime hand out the, the, uh, the, the, the power, to the blacks, right? So then 
there's no any security, no any regime security threat to the black South Africa government. And so they abandoned it. After the, uh, uh, the, the Soviet Union and these independent states, they think they can get security protection from international community. They can get this, and some countries think they can join the NATO, so get the security protection, nuclear umbrella from US, so they think there's no danger to their security, especially this country went through the democratization, right? So when they adopt this Western democratic system, and then people never think the foreign threat will uh, uh, threat, threaten to their domestic regimes, so they give up the nuclear weapons. E Libya, the same. Gaddafi never think he will be toppled down if he gave up the uh, nuclear weapons. But uh, after Libya, people's mentality changed. They said, hey, wait a minute. If you give up nuclear weapons, if you're an enemy of the US, you face the danger of the war from the, uh, launched by the US. And then that war will destroy you, not the country, but destroy your regime. So nowadays, from my understanding, the arms control is no longer like during the Cold War, only related to the national security. Actually, after the Gulf War, and I don't think any country faces the danger being annexed by anyone. The international charter, international community has to prevent any kind of annexation of the other states. But no one can guarantee the regime securities. So the why now, from my understanding, now the arms control already faced a new situation from what we familiar uh, with that during the Cold War. Okay, so uh, in my book, The Inertia of the History and uh, uh, China and the World in the Rest of 10 Years, I think it will be published in, uh, trans it's already translated in English by Oxford, and the, it, it came out uh, uh, the second half this year. And in that book, I focused in 2013. I predict that North Korea is going to stop nuclear test, but it never gave up nuclear weapons. The reason is that the weapon is the base of the regime security. If you get rid of nuclear weapons, they say, hey, the regime will be toppled down. So, my understanding, now this is what we must concern for the further arms control, and if we want these countries to give up the nuclear weapons, we must be talking about how to guarantee their regime security. Unfortunately, like these uh, uh, countries, Iran and the, uh, North Korea, the Western countries say, hey, for the sake of a political correctness, we cannot, even we, <laughs> privately, we uh, uh, promise, we guarantee the security, uh, uh, re regime security, but we cannot say that. But for these countries, they say, hey, we need to say publicly to the, to the public and make everyone knows that you do not want to put down the regime. So this is what we're facing. Second, it's about uh, how about the, the, arm, the regime of the uh, arms uh, uh, non-proliferation? My understanding, non-proliferation regime is being undermined, like I said, from the junior Bush period, and now I think it will be further undermined by the Trump administration. Because this administration have no interest in arms control. They don't think that this the arm, arms control uh, uh, regime or community uh, has any meaning. And the, I don't mean that uh, they, because they, uh, they have, uh, different mentality, and they do not fear about the danger of war. But Trump really gave the first priority to economic interests. For, for this government, they don't think any security interest should be overwhelm the economic interests. Since they gave the first priority to the economic interests, I don't think they want to spend effort, time, and energy on this issue. Well. All of us agree, arms control regime is a multilateral, and you need the leadership, especially for nuclear weapons, and the U.S. have to undertake the leadership. If U.S. do not undertake the leadership, who can replace that? Who can function like a leader? 
So my understanding, neither China nor Russia is able to play that role. So that means we are going to have a no leadership for the further arms control community. And without the leadership, how can we make progress? I think this is uh, just uh, related to what we discussed yesterday. And uh, during the Cold War, and uh, we are so lucky, like uh, Professor uh, uh, Crippen said, and Soviet Union and the US provide a joint leadership. Even they confront against uh, everything, but I don't know why, they work so closely. They provide a joint leadership for the non-proliferation. Unfortunately, today, we don't have America, we don't have G2, and who will, how can we get a collective leadership for this, uh, the, the arms control regime? And uh, from my understanding, that's very difficult. So on this point, I will say, at this moment, if we want to have this regime resume its energy, like the Clinton's period, and we still can only wait for something happen, and to US, you have a, a new leadership, they have interest in arms control, they think this is serious, this is related to the security of the whole world, for the seven million population on the earth, and only the really concern they're serious. But if they concern, hey, the money is more serious than this issue, and uh, I doubt. The last thing I want to say is that now the arms control for man's time, I totally agree with uh, uh, Nikolai, and uh, this arms control can no longer limit it within the nuclear issue, uh, uh, regime. It should expand to other fields. The reason is that because the nuclear weapons are guaranteed the basic uh, security for the whole world, that means uh, there's uh, no danger of the global war. Meanwhile, and the countries, especially major powers, becomes uh, brave to attack each other on the website, on the internet. So the cyber war actually already f fought every day. Now, my situation is that, how can we prevent this kind of a cyber, uh, a cyber war or cyber, a cyber attack escalating into something dangerous? I don't mean that it will exaggerate to nuclear war, but then if we do not have the arms control on this, this will become a big problem. And actually, like Clinton said, this cyber world is a primitive uh, 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 a society. There's no any sufficient international law or regulation to govern this uh, area. So that's really what we need. The last point is that, and uh, how can we make the major powers to cooperate with each other uh, in arms control? And first, we need to advocating or the looking for the common interest shared by them. If the major powers do not recognize there is a common or shared interest, you can hardly expect them to cooperate with each other. No, no reason, no, no, no engine to driving them to uh, work together. And so at this moment, from my understanding, and uh, because the world has a heavily rely on the digital economy, and because the world heavily rely on the uh, the, the, the internet, internet already becomes like electricity. It's a, not only not like nuclear weapons for the military, for national security, it's for the life, for everything. So this area, and actually should, uh, we have a lot of uh, shared interests in, uh, uh, in this uh, field. And uh, in this, uh, uh, how can we copy each other? My understanding, you can never have everyone is equal. That's uh, politically correct, we, because this uh, uh, everyone is e uh, the equal sovereignty adopted by the UN Charter, so people say, hey, the politically, this is a principle. That's true. But uh, when you come to a cooperation, you need a leadership. That means uh, some country must have a more equal than the 
should be more equal than others. Otherwise, they won't provide the leadership. Leadership is at the cost. They have to pay for it. And so in that way, my understanding, in this, in this regime, we at least need, need the equity only among the major powers. Make the major powers feel we are few countries are equal, and then talking about shared interests, they will work with each other. And finally, I will say, at this, at this moment, how much we can advocate in multilateralism as a principle to governing all major powers of foreign policy? I don't know. At the least, and the White House never feel uh, uh, awkward or they the have any difficult to publicly say we do not like the multilateralism. Uh, now, even you have the hypocritical garments you know, for the major powers, at least they say the multilateralism is correct, unilateralism is wrong. Now, even hypocritically, now people <laughs> feel, sh they do not feel ashamed to say, no, we don't like the multilateralism. So how can we make a multilateralism? It's a politi internationally political correctness. This is a, uh, it's a very important at this moment. Thank you. Thank you.